welcome back to the shop. I know it's been a little far between past videos, but I kind of just been getting some stock together and some tools together that I need to make an upcoming project, which we'll talk about in another video. But as part of the tooling that I needed, I needed a set of collet blocks. So the hex and square collet blocks, 5C collet blocks, you guys have seen them everywhere. I don't have any 5C collets, but I do have ER40 collets. So rather than invest in a set of 5C collets that would only be used by those collet blocks because none of my other tools in the shop use those, I tracked down and found a set of ER40 collet blocks. So those ER40s work on the collet check that I built for the uh, little 9 salt bend. I can also get an adapter to fit them in my mill and I also got the collet blocks here. So these came from Pen Tool. They were $40 each, and they came, just as you see them, with the nuts and everything. Um, since then, I've actually, they came with a pot number on the back there. You can kind of see it there. I looked around online. I actually looked up that pot number and found them for $10 less on Amazon. So these shipped to my door were $85. So you can save yourself $20 bucks if you find them on Amazon. Completely up to you. I had no problems whatsoever with Pen Tool. They came pretty quick. I think they're based out of New Jersey. No problems with those guys. I will definitely order from them again. But what we're interested is seeing how well these hold up, see how concentric they are, if they're any good or not. So why don't we go over to the bench, take a closer look at them, and take some measurements. Just one thing I noticed I didn't say as I was editing the video. Kitten wants to say hi. The nuts are standard. So you can get a better one, uh, a ball bearing one for pretty cheap and just replace them. The threads are standard. Also, as, as far as pen tool and Amazon, that's U.S. distribution I'm talking about. There are also European distributors of it and I believe an Australian one. If you do a search under, St um, I'm looking at it right now, Stevenson's Collet Blocks, you'll find uh, it's Arc Euro Trade and uh, Aussie machines and tools are the other two supplies I found of them. There might be a few other ones out there uh, on eBay or somewhere else, but those are the major ones that I've found. Okay, so these are the victims here. Okay. And you can see that part number. Right there. It says HHIP-3900-5129 and this is the same thing, just 5125, okay? So those are the part numbers and you can see the well ground, okay? The only thing I noticed as far as fit and finish wise is on this hex one and only on the hex one. The front, that first thread here you can see is a little chattery on that edge, almost like it didn't get completely, that edge didn't get completely broken. Now that's not a huge thing. I'll, I can just take a stone and swipe that off. That's not a really big issue, but um, as far as fit and finish goes, that's the only issue. Now, the biggest thing between this and, say, a 5C call it, this isn't a 5C, but it's a 2A, but basically the same thing, is you can see that this one gets drawn in to the collet taper from the back. So the 5Cs would be threaded in from the back. There will be a collar ring on the back of the block. You would tighten up and it would suck it in. This, on the ERs... Actually, let me put the collet in the nut first. They draw in and tighten from the front. Okay, so that's the biggest difference. So, a couple of good things and bad things about that. The two good things, or the good thing for me is that I already have the collet, the whole set of collets. Also, the ER series collets have more of a range than a 5C collet. And also, if you have this, say, in your milling vise, you can leave the whole thing set up, undo just the nut off the front, put a new piece in and tighten it down. You don't have to remove the whole block, undo the nut from the back and place it in. That way you can just set it to where you want it in the vise and leave it alone. The major drawback here is as you can see this nut is bigger than the body. On the 5C that won't be the case. Uh, the body will be the same 
size so you do have a little bit of a honk and nut on the end to contend with now for whatever reason it doesn't quite fit the well maybe it does it I mean it wants to fit the wrench but it's a little bit it's not as forgiving as you can see as the Shars nut that I have and I could probably just you know give this a little buzz or these these uh, slots here a quick little polish but it doesn't have a, a little harder to get in and out but it works so for right now what, what I want to do is I'm probably gonna have to change the lighting just so you can see the micrometer I have my micrometer stand here and what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure across the flats and make sure we have the same distance from each side of the flats if those are different then obviously um, depending on which way you put it in your vise you're gonna get a different reading every time so we're gonna check those out and see if this is a, if this is actually square to each other if this they're the same distance apart each flat and then we're gonna chuck these in the chuck indicate them in indicate the actual hex and the flats in and then we'll run a pin gauge in the front and check concentricity Okay, so I just had to play with the lighting a little bit so you guys can see that. We're going to put the collet block right in here. And we're going to check and see where we end up. So you guys can see that's where we end up. Now i got to move it up to my eyeballs. So we're a little under 750 749 and we'll call that nine eight tenths 749 and eight tenths I don't know if you guys can see that maybe that'll focus on the eight focus 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 I don't know if that'll focus on the eight for you guys Okay, so that was in this direction here. We're going to go clockwise one. And we are reading, we'll call that seven, six tenths, 749 and six tenths. I don't know if that looks for you. So we were there, we went there, and now we're going to go here. And let's see what this ends up as. Oh, no way is it that bad. I got something there. And we're going to go, I know you guys can't see this, but you're just going to have to trust me. Somewhere between six and seven tenths, it's pretty close on the line for both, for either of them. It's pretty close. So we're, we're, let me back out for you guys, flat to flat, we're pretty damn good. Now I'm going to do the same thing real quick with the square one. This is going to be 740, 44, and 744, and... Six tenths, and then seven forty four and Nine 
9 tenths. So. Okay, so I have this squared up in the chuck and I have a 3 eighths gauge pin in there. And just to show you here, you can see we're zero there, come around to the next flat, zero there, come around to the next flat, zero, just shy of zero there, and then just shy of zero there. So we're pretty, pretty close. Close enough for this quick test. This is really tight. I tightened it from the vise, from the milling vise. Just put this in the milling vise and cranked on it. Now we just wanted to make sure that this block here is running true and not this pin. We can adjust this pin to wherever we want it, but what we want to find out is how square and parallel this actual taper is to our square there. So this square is running true and it's actually not touching the back of this chuck here so that the chuck doesn't throw off any kind of uh, reading that we're getting. is held just in the draws. So now I'm going to take this here, I'm going to move it up to our pin and we're going to see what we get for run out here. So I'm going to zero that real quick. So we're getting like one to a half a run out in there. And this may not be perfectly in there, but that is not bad at all. Okay, so you can see this indicator here. We're pretty close dialed in. We're like a little over zero there. A little over zero there. Right at zero there. A little over zero. A little bit more above zero, like half a thou there. And a little over zero there. So, that's as indicated as I'm going to be able to get this without literally chasing my tail for like half an hour. So, alright, I got the indicator moved out out here. Now, that little bit of run out here is going to translate into more run out out here, but we're just getting a general indication of what we're dealing with. So, let's go ahead and zero this out. And we're, uh, it looks like we're within three. Yeah, we're pretty much within three thou there. That's not bad at all. That's not bad at all. I bet you I could probably half that if I were to really start chasing my tail and get this perfectly indicated. But it's kind of a pain in the butt. You can see that I have two jaws on the flats here, so it's kind of hard to judge where you're going. But for, you know, what we're going to be using this for and what we're asking this to do, perfectly acceptable. So definitely worth the money. If you guys need a call-up block and you want to get the ER series call-up blocks, definitely uh, worth the money. I got no complaints. So we'll actually be using this on our next project.